Welcome back to A Level Lessons Online. All right, in today's video, we're going to be looking at the next part of our macro econ series. Uh, moving on to part 10A on unemployment. All right, so in the previous two uh, kind of like segments that we had, the pre previous four videos that we have had, we've already gone through what economic growth is as well as inflation. Right, so over here we're going to be covering what the different macroeconomic goals are. Right, that is what this series currently is all about. So in this part, we're going to be looking at the next macroeconomic goal, which is to be our uh, macroeconomic goal which is to achieve low unemployment. Right? Unemployment, as you guys know, basically means that... Okay, I'll, give, I'll go to the definition later on. But layman definition is that basically um, someone is jobless right? when you're unemployed. So we're going to be looking at the various types and causes that um, actually exist in an economy. So we'll be looking at these kind of... Um, uh, types of unemployment okay, that actually exists within the macro economy. All right. So firstly, let's go through the de definition. All right. So definition of unemployment is people who are registered as able, available, and willing to work in a suitable job, but they cannot find this paid employment. Right. That is what unemployment means. Right. It's when someone is actually willing. All right. They are able to take up the job. Um. But somehow, due to certain reasons, uh, this job is simply not available to them. Alright, so we'll look at what are the various reasons or various causes when these jobs, these uh, jobs that people are trying to look for are actually not available. So the first kind is called um, cyclical unemployment or some of you guys may know it as demand deficient unemployment. So this occurs when the economy is at a recessionary phase of the trade cycle. Essentially when it has this, um, when it's experiencing falling AD, falling growth, right? it's usually accompanied by a rise in unemployment. So this is usually a cause by a fall in AD. So when, for instance, demand for exports by foreigners fall, what happens is that there will be a fall in production and output by firms. Hence, the demand for factors of production, okay, the derived demand for labor, would actually fall. So this results in this thing called demand deficient or cyclical unemployment, right? What happens is that uh, when there is a recession, okay, let's say there's a global recession or let's say there's a fall in your in one of your AD factors, for instance, a fall in exports or a fall in investment spending, what happens is that this would actually cause a fall in AD, right, which actually leads uh, to a fall in your national income. Okay, this means that your firms are going to be cutting down um, or, it, or it essentially implies that firms are cutting down on the output, right, and when there is a fall in their income, what happens is that they're going to want to reduce costs somewhere else such that the profits can remain the same, as a result, the easiest cost to actually get rid of, right, because, for instance, machinery and all, they're much harder to actually get rid of. So the easiest cost to actually get rid of is going to be your factors of production in the form of labor, right? So what happens is that the derived demand for labor would fall. They would either lay off more people or they would reduce the openings for jobs. Okay, and as a result, this would result in more people being unemployed, right? So this is usually because of factors due to AD, which is why we call it demand-deficient unemployment. Okay, right, next type is structural unemployment. This is a very common one in today's society. It is when there is a mismatch of skills between the unemployed and the producers. Right, this usually occurs when the economy undergoes structural changes due to changes in demand and technology. Right, structural changes meaning that the economy or the country is shifting in terms of, let's say, from a um, consumer goods industry to a capital goods industry. So there's a change in machinery, there's a structural change in the types of goods and services that are being produced. As a result, this, this requires a different skill set care of your workers to actually have in order to ensure that the same output can be produced um, in these new industries. So this results in certain industries and skills becoming obsolete as a result. Um, so the workers who do not possess enough skills or the necessary skills will definitely lose their job in these obsolete industries uh, Industries and may not have the skills required to join the sunrise industries. So sunrise industries are essentially those industries that are up and coming, right? So they are basically your tech-driven industries, social media industries. Um, these are basically new industries which which have very much um, higher technology, which requires a new skill set to actually um, operate the machinery or any sort of um, decision-making when it comes to these industries. Um, so on the other hand, your sunset industries are those industries that are basically uh, becoming obsolete. Right, so for instance, manufacturing, uh, or either basically those in the primary sector, right? Those are definitely those uh, which are becoming more obsolete today. 
Um, so as a result, the workers who are actually employed here may not actually have the skills required that is from the Sunrise industry, which are more high-tech industries. So as a result, this is why there is a skills mismatch because they do not possess the skills required to get them employed in these Sunrise industries. So this is why we have this thing called structural unemployment that um, occurs as a result. So definitely it's going to be more applicable to the older generation which did not grow up with technology. They are not tech savvy. Um, whereby structural unemployment is a very, very common cause of unemployment amongst um, this group of people. Alright, the last one is fictional unemployment. So fictional unemployment is basically when a person is unemployed in between him transiting jobs, right? So one thing for sure, okay, is that um, as you see in the last point, okay, occurs all the time regardless of the state of the economy is that fictional unemployment actually occurs all the time. Right, regardless of whether the economy is doing extremely well or doing horribly, there is going to be a group of people who are unemployed and looking for a job. These are the people who will term them as being frictionally unemployed. Right, whereby they, they are basically experiencing a time lag, let's say three to four months, between them transiting from one job. Let's say they quit their job. Let's say they are unhappy with management that they quit. But because they are now trying to look for another job, they let's say have to spend on three to four months. This three to four months is when they are known as known to be fictionally unemployed. Right, so it's due to the job search in the process of trans, uh, transitioning between jobs, time lag needed for both the employees and the employers to find the right job or the right staff. Right, so definitely through all the interview processes, the exams and all the kind of different um, stages that a person needs to go through in order to get employed in a new firm, right, that whole period which takes a while, usually four months could lead up all the way to one or two years, is when these people are fictional, uh, fictionally unemployed. Right, so that's what we call fictional unemployment. Alright, so exam requirements is very, very simple. I think you guys should be able to have this at the back of your head already, right? It's actually such a simple part of your entire macro syllabus. You just need to be able to understand and explain the various types of unemployment. So demand deficient is caused by AD factors. Uh, structural unemployment usually caused by a difference in skills mismatch. Um, and lastly, fictional unemployment, which actually occurs all the time due to time lag between transitioning between jobs. We're going to be able to link them to the consequences of unemployment if required in the next part. Alright, so unemployment on this part on types or causes is actually very, very simple to um, for you guys to master. Right? So make sure you do master it. Uh, just understand the three main types and later on we'll look at the consequences which are also very, very simple for unemployment and that will be all for this entire part on unemployment. So very, very simple. Make sure you really do get a good hang of it. It can come out as a very, very simple 10 mark question. Um, in, in your essays or, or in your case studies. So do go and get those points, that those marks in the back. Uh, if not, that's all I have for this part. If you did enjoy this video or you did learn something, be sure to give it a thumbs up as well as to subscribe to me because it costs you nothing. It's free. And yeah, you can always unsubscribe later on if you want to. You, uh, you're free to do so. Um, if not, if you have any questions, you can always leave in the comment section below or head over to my Facebook or my Instagram to drop me DMs and let me know if you have any questions that you are unsure of. Uh, if not, that's all I have for this video. Okay, I'll see you guys in the next one, which will be on our consequences of unemployment. And then we'll be moving on to balance of payments, which is not required by your H1 students, but H2, you do need to know what balance of payments are. And then we'll be moving on to solutions and uh, other things in your macroeconomy. Alright, so if not, I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good one. Bye-bye.